I had to write this all down, so sometimes I'll be reading. I think every creative person has various people that inspire them, and for me that list is long and always expanding, but the one person that I always come back to that seems to be the most influential in my career and the person I've been chasing most is Spike Jones. For those that don't know or just need a refresher, Spike Jones is a photographer, filmmaker, director, musician, actor. I don't really have a day job, sir. And he's responsible for some of the most iconic music videos, commercials, and films. At least for me. He co-created MTV's Jackass. He's an Oscar winner. This is an amazing moment. And he was behind the launch of Vice's TV channel, Viceland. Now, I know what Vice is. What is Viceland? Which is one of the reasons why two years ago I decided to leave my old job and go to the land that Spike built. Well, we want it to feel like a channel made by people about things we're interested in, and it's almost like a whole, cha a whole TV channel that feels personal. So cut to 1994. I was 13 years old, and films like Jurassic Park, Shawshank Redemption, Dumb and Dumber, and Forrest Gump were not only influencing who I was, but what I wanted to become. Action. And films weren't the only thing that were inspiring me back then. I got big into much music and watching music videos. Hey, let's get to a video. It's uh, Moby's Body Rock. We're here on uh, Much Action. In that TV. same year, 1994, Spike Jones released two iconic videos Sabotage and Buddy Holly. What's with this is this my girl? I don't know exactly what it was about those videos that I liked so much. I just knew that I wanted to know who made them. Hi, we're here with Spike Jones, the music video director. So, cut to 1999. The video for Fatboy Slim's Praise You comes out. Not only did Spike Jones direct it, but he also starred in it as this very weird, wacky choreographer named Richard Coffey. It's all this choreography also, let me tell you. It was weird, it was different, it was unlike anything I had ever seen, and it was hilarious. Around that same time, Much Music held their yearly Much Temp contest, which was a contest to get a summer internship there. We'll give you your own Toronto apartment, $5,000 fun money, and of course, every good temp needs a car. I decided that it was my mission to win that contest. Show us why you should be the Much Temp, then send it in to Much Music. So the concept was simple. I was going to recreate the Praise You video, step for step, move for move, and afterwards interview myself to say why I deserve the job. Well, growing up in Toronto, I've performed with no b-boy posses, but I have watched a lot of much music, and uh, when I saw an opportunity to work there, I jumped and danced all over it. I'm no dancer, but I think I did a pretty damn good job. After I finished the video, I was convinced that I was going to get that job. I didn't get the job. So cut to a couple years later, I go to university, I'm studying film and visual arts, and Spike Jones's new film adaptation is coming out, and it just so happens that there's a special screening at my school. And not only that, but Spike, Charlie Kaufman, and Nick Cage are going to be there for a Q&A. Anyway, I beg, borrow, and steal to find a way to get a ticket to that show. I go to the show, I watch the movie. Love the movie. Oh, thanks. Wow, that's, that's nice to hear. The lights come up. I want to ask a question pretty badly. My heart's racing. Don't know what to ask. What should I ask? Anyway, I raised my hand, and I was the last person picked. When the credits were rolling, I noticed that in the special thanks, it said something about the guy on the bench. So I asked, what was that all about? Charlie Kaufman ended up answering that question. Turns out that when he was stressed and trying to figure out how to write the screenplay, he was down in Miami and he was kind of at his wit's end and he sat on a bench and next to him was this old man on a bench who I guess gave him some words of wisdom. Wild them in the end, and you've got a hit. I'm trying to remember back to the exact answer, but it was something along those lines. That much temp contest that I had lost in 1999, I tried again in 2001, lost, 2002, lost, but in 2003, I tried for a fourth time, 
and I won. I'm gonna tempt you So I won a car, I won five grand, but more importantly, I won a job at Much Music. You like Sparky? There you go, buddy. Long story short, I started as an intern. There you go, Mark. Check it out. Worked my way up till eventually I was writing, shooting, directing, editing TV shows for Much. It was the best job. But after making TV shows for a while, I realized that I wasn't a director. I wasn't making music videos, I wasn't making commercials, I wasn't chasing Spike. So there was an opportunity within Much Music to change departments, to go from the production side to the creative side. So I made the leap. So in that department, I got to make some of my best work, some of the stuff I'm most proud of. But one thing I got to make while I was there is eerily similar to Spike Jones's lamp commercial for Ikea. Some call it homage, some call it stealing. Um, I don't know what to call it. Many of you feel bad for this lamp. That is because you're crazy. It has no feelings. So finally I felt like I was a director. I was making creative stuff that I was happy with, that other people seemed to like, and it was good. But the one thing I hadn't done was made a film, and it's something I always wanted to do. So by this point, I had gotten married, and my wife was expecting our first child. And a buddy of mine had a great idea. Hey man, I know much you wanted to make a movie, but you should really think about making a short film, or even just a trailer. I told him I had a couple ideas. I've got a couple ideas. Well, you should work on something soon before your baby comes out. Now's the time, before the baby comes out, to make this movie. So, I kind of made the movie about that. So with less than a few months before the birth of my first kid, I decided that the due date was a perfect motivator for both me personally and the film's plot. He's absolutely right. So adaptation is always a movie that I kind of reference and think about, and it just so happens that the start of my movie is eerily similar to the start of adaptation. Do I have an original thought in my head? Mark, it's Luke. Give me a call when you get a chance. Life is short. I need to make the most of it. I had a, uh, a weird dream, and the dream was uh, the start of your documentary. It's like the first two minutes. I'm a walking cliche. I really need to go to the doctor and have my leg checked. At the start of the movie, like it, it's all about delivery. All I do is sit on my fat ass. Actually, the temp font that I used for my graphics and movie poster was the same as adaptation. It didn't work for my film, so I eventually changed it. But I'd be lying if I said that adaptation wasn't an inspiration for the opening of my film. So anyway, the film's done. Uh, I'm happy to say that it got on Netflix worldwide, so that was like unbelievable. Like, mission accomplished, dream come true. So are we done? See, that was timing. So a couple years later, uh, Spike happened to be at the Toronto International Film Festival doing a Q&A and showing clips for his upcoming film, Her. The woman that I've been seeing, Samantha, she's an operating system. You're dating in a West? What is that like? So, of course, I got tickets. Afterwards, I went up to him, snapped a quick pic, and got him to sign the work of director Spike Jones. Thanks. So this gets us back to close to the beginning when I said that two years ago I left my job to go work at Viceland. A big part of the reason why I chose to go there is because Spike Jones. I feel excited and anxious that, you know, just to make sure we actually seize the opportunity as well as we can. If Spike was going to be the creative direction, creative lead on this new TV channel, then I wanted to be a part of it. So right now we have this opportunity at this moment in time. What are we going to do with it? While working at Vice, not only was I able to make some cool stuff at the company, oh, right off. Oh, wait. but I continued to try and make some cool stuff on the side. Anyway, last year, I got to direct a music video with my buddy Shane called Knocking at the Door for the band Arkells. Long story short, it was nominated for an MMVA. Not only was it nominated, but it won. Arkells Knocking at the Door! I always wanted an MMVA, 
I had worked at Much Music, worked behind the scenes of that show for a number of years, so to win that award meant a lot. Shane and Mark, give them a huge round of applause. It's kind of foolish to think that we need like hardware to legitimize ourselves, but uh, winning that MMVA meant a lot and made me feel like I was a music video director officially. So Mark, do you want to say anything to your kids? Thanks for making me a dad. So for the past 20 years, I've been chasing Spike and often asking myself, what would Spike do? And it's led me all the way to working for the TV channel that he helped build. But recently, I've had to make the tough decision to actually leave Viceland and go in a new direction. Do you realize what you've done? So not that I have like words of wisdom or some big lesson here, but I think it's cool and important to have heroes, to have inspiration, but it's also cool to step out and do your own thing. The town is back that way. So although I didn't get to work with Spike or even meet him while working at Viceland, uh, moving forward, right or wrong, I probably will continue to ask myself, what would Spike do? And maybe in the future, I'll make something cool enough that somebody may say, what would Mark do? Oh, thanks, wow, that's, that's nice to hear. No, it's, it's based on what is probably gonna happen someday. Anyway, it's done, and that's something.